Are you tired of feeling exhausted and unheard in your interactions with narcissists? What if there were powerful phrases that could help you to respectfully stand your ground? Well, in this video, I'm going to share 10 powerful phrases with some extra bonus ones that will empower you to assert yourself against narcissists. These phrases are not just about overcoming manipulation, but also about reclaiming your voice and your identity and preventing emotional abuse. Now, when I refer to narcissists, I'm talking about people who exhibit an excessive preoccupation with themselves, a grandiose sense of self-importance, a lack of empathy for others. These people are proud, envious, exploitative, and they have a constant need for admiration and validation. So it's just important to note that not everybody who's selfish or manipulative is a narcissist. The traits of a narcissist are deeply ingrained and persistent, which can cause a lot of distress and dysfunction in their relationships. Now first, before we get into it, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. I'm Shanine Megji. Welcome to my channel on toxicity is not your destiny. Destiny. My mission is to help people navigate toxic relationships in their lives from a biblical, practical, and spiritual perspective. So if you'd like to receive regular content from me on this subject, take a moment, click that subscribe button, and click that bell because I'm going to be bringing you videos every week to empower you in navigating toxic relationships. So without further ado, let's dive into the subject. All of us have had the experience where a narcissist will just just not relent, or it will keep pushing to have their way or their opinion validated. Trying to get your point across can feel exhausting, if not downright impossible. And the harder you try, the more heated things become. And yet, just giving in all the time or going along, even though it feels awful, isn't good for your well being either. So, what do you do? Ephesians 4.15 encourages us to speak the truth in love, but with a narcissist, you can't do it in the same way as you might with other people, otherwise it can provoke or escalate conflict. Whatever you say has to state the facts, be concise, and leave as little room as possible for negotiation or argument. Now, there are a number of phrases you can use to help you with this, and today I'm going to discuss 10 of them and a few more. So let's begin. The first category of phrases has to do with sticking to the facts and not allowing the narcissist to derail you or deflect from what you're saying. Narcissists tend to use various methods to distract you or to deflect or derail the conversation. So you might find it helpful to take notes or make notes in advance of the conversation in order to be able to bring things back to the topic you were wishing to discuss. Now, if the narcissist begins to exaggerate, you can say something like, number one, let's stick to the facts. In this statement, we're echoing Proverbs 12.22, which says, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. Telling a narcissist, let's stick to the facts, is a way of steering the conversation back to truth and reality and not allowing distortions to find ground in the conversation. If the narcissist begins to deflect or derail, another phrase you can say is number two, I think it's best if we focus on the issue at hand. Or you could say number three, that is very interesting, but it is not related to the topic I was addressing. Or if the narcissist interrupts you, you can say number four, you just interrupted me. I would like to finish what I was saying. So keeping these phrases in mind can help you keep a conversation on track. Now, let's say you're in a conversation with a narcissist and your opinions differ. Narcissists tend to want everyone to agree with them and to capitulate to their opinion or direction. The reality is that the narcissist may take your disagreement badly or as a challenge, and you may feel it's easier just to cave in and go along with what they are pushing than to assert your opinion. In the long haul, though, this just erodes your identity and your confidence. Remember, it's not just permissible to have a unique opinion or viewpoint, but it's vital. In fact, providing alternate perspectives is necessary to ensure that a narcissist is not living in a bubble of their own creation. But why? Consider the hazards of groupthink. 
Now, groupthink is a term that describes how a group of people can be swayed into making decisions that, as individuals, they would ordinarily challenge or find inappropriate. Now, when everyone agrees without critical analysis or presenting differing viewpoints, this can be dangerous because it can lead to irrational or dysfunctional decision making, which can have damaging outcomes. Narcissists who go unchecked may fall into a similar trap. They can become more deluded and more entrenched in their perspectives as people agree with them and never challenge them, and that can increase the potential harm to others. Now, the Bible offers wisdom on the danger of single mindedness and the importance of multiple viewpoints. Proverbs 15 22 says, Without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. So, this verse suggests the benefits of different perspectives and also the potential dangers of operating in an echo chamber. Furthermore, Galatians 6 1 offers guidance for situations where someone may be falling into delusion or sin. It says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. The scripture underscores the need for gentle correction, which is only possible if we maintain our unique perspectives. So, in light of all that, what phrases could you use to hold up a bear to a narcissist? It's good to have a few phrases on hand so that you can stand your ground when you have a different opinion. So, you might say, I hear your point, but I need you to respect my viewpoint as well. This reinforces the concept of mutual respect. This phrase aligns with Philippians 2 4, which tells us to consider others' interests without neglecting our own. A sixth phrase could be, I respect your opinion, but I see it differently. This phrase reminds the narcissist that you are entitled to have your own perspective and it's just not about his or hers. A seventh phrase I understand you may not agree, but this is how I feel. This validates our emotions. An eighth phrase could be I think we view this situation differently. Now, this phrase recognizes differing perspectives without undermining our own. A ninth phrase could be It seems we aren't going to agree on this matter. And this phrase acknowledges an impasse without inflaming the situation further. The reality is, we won't always be able to resolve a difference of opinion. And at those times, acknowledging the impasse helps you to stop a fruitless discussion before exhausting yourself or inflaming more conflict. Another scenario may be where you need to use powerful phrases with a narcissist. When you need to create space or time to de escalate conflict and calm yourself down, or come to a place of peace before re engaging. So, say you're at a family gathering and your cousin, known for his narcissistic tendencies, starts a heated debate about politics, a topic that usually escalates into an argument. Feeling the tension rising, you might wisely decide to de escalate the situation. So, here are some phrases you might say I'm not comfortable with this topic. Just as we respect other people's boundaries, we must also set our own. And this phrase is a powerful way to protect our emotional well being. And this might serve to bring the conversation to a close, but if not, it alerts those around you to why you are leaving the conversation. Another phrase you can use is Let's discuss this when we are both calm. Proverbs 15 18 reminds us a hot tempered man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger quiets contention. This phrase promotes peace and understanding rather than escalating an argument. It also increases the chances of a more favorable outcome with less stress when both parties have had a chance to cool down and get some clear headedness. A simple alternative that communicates the same thing is this phrase. Can we have this conversation another time? These two phrases invite the other person's agreement in the decision to put a pause on the conversation, but a narcissist will not always agree to such a request. In this instance, your boundary needs to be firm and one sided, and your phrase will need to be more of a statement than a request or suggestion. So, in other words, you are the one deciding. For instance, you might say, I'm going to need time to process this. This one is an essential tool for self care, just as Jesus often retreated to pray and contemplate. We too might need time to think and recharge, especially after an emotionally draining conversation. Alternately, you could say, 
I need to take a step back from this conversation for now. Another time we may need powerful phrases with a narcissist is in managing boundaries when things are getting toxic. So here are some examples. Let's focus on finding a resolution instead of blaming each other. This mirrors the teachings of James. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Focusing on solutions, not blame, leads to productive conversations. Another phrase can be, I understand you're upset, but it's important for us to remain respectful. And this embodies Proverbs 15.1, which says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Even in the heat of the moment, we strive to maintain dignity and respect. Another phrase you can say, your words are not constructive or helpful. This is important when the conversation becomes hurtful. Ephesians 4.29 reminds us, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up. Now, if all else fails, a simple, calm, silent exit from the space can be the best phrase of all. So that is my list of empowering, grace-filled, and assertive phrases you can use in response to narcissistic behavior. It may seem like a lot to remember, but to start, you can choose one or two that you relate to the most and begin practicing them in advance of an interaction. This way, it will be easier to use it calmly and lovingly when you need it. In conclusion, dealing with narcissists can be challenging. The tendency of narcissists to manipulate conversations, override others' opinions, and refuse to acknowledge other viewpoints can cause significant stress and conflict. However, the 15 or so powerful phrases that we discussed today can help you navigate these interactions. They can help you stand your ground and maintain your emotional well-being. Now, remember, these phrases are not a one-time solution. They're a practice. They are an approach to communication that requires consistency and, at times, courage. You may not see immediate changes, but with persistence, you will foster better relationships and also safeguard your own emotional health. Also note that while it's important to stand your ground, there are times when disengaging might be the best course of action, particularly in situations of persistent emotional abuse or toxicity. So I hope this was helpful. I appreciate you joining me today. My hope is that these tools will empower you to navigate your relationships more effectively. Remember, toxicity is not your destiny. You have the power and the grace to navigate and transform even the most challenging relationships. Now, shifting gears. Are you in a season of transition? If so, check out a free training I have put together. It is all about three key ways to navigate a transition. These are things that brought a massive breakthrough in my life when I was going through a difficult transition. I have included the link in the description box below. If you'd like to see more content from me and have not subscribed yet, click that subscribe button and click the bell because every single week I will be posting a new video to empower you in navigating toxic relationships. And this brings me to the end of my video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, take care and God bless you.